All right. The video you're about to see today is to show you how to actually host your game server on a dedicated server. So something that isn't your own computer, something that is outside that everybody will be able to access. For example, your friend, your neighbor, your friend in, in Japan or something like that. They can all play your game through the same server through a dedicated host. We're going to be using Linux today and my Linux machine is going to be hosted on DigitalOcean. If you don't know anything about things I just mentioned, you can stick along and, and you're going to learn and uh, it's going to be up and running. So don't worry about that. Today is the video that you guys have been waiting for. Let's go ahead and get started. Cheers. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. This one is going to be quite cool because we're finally going to be hosting our game somewhere else than on our computer. So on the Linux machine, a cloud, a cloud machine, actually. So a couple of things we're going to need today. First, a game. Um, second, a account on DigitalOcean or Amazon Web Services or your own Linux machine lying somewhere at your house. So we're, we're putting that on Linux today. So you're going to need a Linux machine. I'm personally going to be using DigitalOcean. That's what I would recommend if you want to help me out and help the channel. There is a link down there in the description. You can sign up to that. And the third thing you will need if you're using a Linux machine like I am right now is a terminal, just like the Git bash terminal. It's a terminal that needs to support SSH because we're going to be using SSH and also SCP, which uh, is the secure transfer protocol. That being said, we are going to go ahead and get those things. So if you don't have any of those things, first gitforwindows.org is where you can get git bash, which is my, my preferred terminal at the moment. And then digital ocean is digital ocean and you can sign it with Google or I believe you can also sign it with Google and even Git. I don't quite remember exactly, but you can create an account on that. The third thing you will need is a game. It's a game actually that needs to be um, configured to run on a server. What do I mean by that? Well, let's have a look. If I am to run this game right now, as you can see, we get stuck right here. There is no server being spawned. There is no client. I have to manually take my mouse and click on server. So that's not going to work out on our cloud machine because there is no mouse and there is no, there is no one attending to your machine ready to press on the button when you launch the build. Okay. So those are the things. Well, uh, by the way, I'm going to go over how to do that in just a second. But um, before I go any further, those were the three things that we need for today. And I'd like to address one of the comments that was put on um, our previous hosting video. And that comment was regarding what happens if we're not hosting the chess game, for example, because the chess game, the host has to be there because he's also a player within the game. Um, how do we make it so it can just be a server on its own? Well, this is uh, this comment is a good one. Um, I want to say that this is regarding your game mechanic. Um, for the chess game, it made sense for the host to be part of the game because there's only two player in um, the case I'm going to be using today, this is my survival online survival game. And here you can decide just to be a server by yourself and not see anything that's going on. Just offer the world for other people to join in, just like a Minecraft server would do, a uh, dedicated Minecraft server would do. So it's just a matter of having the proper logic behind your game. And here, as you can see, I have the three options when I sign in, uh, server, client, or server plus client. So when I click on these, if I click on both server and client, I'm actually, let me see, where is the the thing I'm looking for? Here it is. As you can see here, I launch both a exile client and also a exile server. If I am just to press on server, I only launch a server. And if I only press on client, of course, I only launch a client. So my game is split up in, in such ways. Now, our first goal today is going to be to prepare ourselves a build to be run on the server side. And to do so, I am not just going to circumvent this flow. I like this flow. I want to keep it for when I'm developing. However, when this is run on the Linux machine or when this is run with a certain argument, I want it to jump directly inside of the server. So here's what actually here's a way you can actually do that. So under my preloader script, which actually takes care of the button click. So when I click on server, client, and also uh, client server, this is being handled under my preloader.cs. So this script right here, what you can do is actually say, Hey, we don't need to click on anything. If we circumvent that logic completely using arguments, so command line arguments, 
And here is the piece of code that I'm using in this case. You know what? I'm just going to put the dash here because Unity likes to do that. Um, system environment get command line arguments. If you don't know what this is, if you have no idea, we're about to cover it in just a few seconds. Um, but do note that this is the line I'm using. And if I find a matching argument that says launch as client, then I click on on client click. And do note that I don't want both of these to happen. So I'll just put the L statement. Okay. And if I send in an argument that says launch as server with a dash in front, um, then it's going to do on server click. How does this work exactly? I'll quickly show you and you don't need to do that. But just for the sake of showing you, I'm going to go ahead and create myself a build. So here are my build settings for this very specific test build I'm doing. It's a Windows build for 64 bit. It doesn't have anything checked beneath that. And as you can see, as I launch the game, we are put under this very specific state. Now, right here is my folder in which the build uh, I just made is. And if we double click on it, same thing, you know, we just launched the game. Perfect. We understand this concept. Now, what we're going to do next is we are actually going to put that inside of a command line just like this. And I'm going to drag and drop the executable. And here, as you can see, same thing as before, if I launch, this happens. Okay, let's exit. But now I can also launch with argument next to it. So I'm just going to say launch as server like so. And as you can see here, I haven't touched anything. It's going to skip the flow of showing me the three option and launch immediately as a server, which is what I wanted. So right here, that's how I circumvent the first step of clicking on something by sending in a specific argument. Now, not only that, but when we're on Linux, we don't care about seeing the graphics, right? So what we can do is we can run this under batch mode. So adding one more argument, this one is from Unity, enter batch mode, and then you don't see it, but it's actually running. To confirm it's running, we can open up the task manager and find the executable called exile. Here it is. So I'm going to go ahead and end that task, but basically it's right there. Um, you can also send in no graphics. That's for Windows. And it's running. It's running as a dev build, as you can see, because here I'm receiving I'm receiving the, um, the debug.log that I usually put. So server is listening on 8000. OK, so having that um, having that done, I'm going to kill this process. And it's actually time to prepare ourselves, <laughs> prepare ourselves the Linux build. So if you don't have it already, head over to Unity Hub. Find the version of Unity you're using right now. Go under Show in Explorer. Actually, no. Go under um, Add Module and make sure you have the Linux build support. I've actually installed both of them, but I believe you only need the L2. IL2. I'm not sure. Just install both. Okay. <laughs> Once your Unity instance is upgraded, you can go under the build settings and switch over to Windows, which in my case, when I do that, always crashes. So um, wait until it crashes, then reopen Unity again, and you should be fine. And we are back. So we have a Linux target platform. The architecture is 64 bit. And then I can choose to have a server build, which basically server build, um, as you saw earlier, when I launched the Atlas mode, I said batch mode and no graphics. I believe that if you check this, it's being optimized in such a way that you don't need to add it in. It's just going to be there. Uh, so I'm going to check that. I'm also going to check development build just for myself, just for my sake, basically, so I can see the debug.log happening. And this is my Linux build. I'm going to hit build and put it somewhere in a folder. Actually, this Linux build folder here, I'll just clean it up prior and save it right here. Let's wait until this is done and we're going to come back for step number two. Our Linux build is completed. We have a folder full of information right here. Now it's time for us to have a Linux machine. This could be done through having a Raspberry Pi lying around. This could be done through Amazon Web Services. This could be done through a virtual machine on your computer. This could be done through DigitalOcean. And that's the option I'll be going for. More info in the description down below if you wish. What you have to do in here is you create yourself a project. This is specific to DigitalOcean, but you'll have a very similar flow with your own um, cloud provider. So what we're trying to do here is just set up a machine. Once we have the machine, we connect to the Linux the same exact way as you would do it if you had, for example, a Raspberry Pi. OK, so in DigitalOcean, I create myself a project. I create myself a droplet, which is the Linux machine we were talking about. Um, I'm going to choose Ubuntu. 20.04, why not? Let's go ahead and try the new LTS. I want to have a basic 
the least expensive because this is just a test. Oh, actually, there's an even cheaper one here. <laughs> Let's go ahead and use that. Um, hosting on New York, sure, or Toronto in my case, that'd be, that'd be nice. And down here is where you choose a authentication method. Now, the best practice right here is to have yourself a SSH key and actually connect with that SSH key. For the scope of this video, I'm not going to be showing that, but towards the end, I'll explain some best practices you can do from that point on. But to keep things simple, I'm going to be choosing a password, which is, as you can see, less secure. Now I have to type in a password. Let me use root one password for the moment. And what do we need exactly? One droplet. The host name is going to be exile server. No need to tag. That's the name of my project. Sure. And we're going to go ahead and create ourselves a droplet. Now in just a few, we are going to have ourselves a machine. So let's have a look. As you can see right here, this is being built. And now we have to get ready to connect to that machine. To do so, we can launch a git bash instance. So I'm going to go ahead and just clear everything. Oops. Zoom in just a tiny bit. And we're going to try and connect to this. The way we connect to a machine, um, Linux machine like that, is using the SSH protocol. So SSH um, space, and then the name of your user in that machine. And we're going to connect directly through root user. So root at, and then the IP is right here. So I'm going to hit copy, right click and paste. Now do note that um, another, another nice thing you can do to protect your instance is to, once you get in there, create yourself your own user that isn't root, but that has admin privileges. You can find a lot of tutorial online on how to do that. That would be the best practice. Once you try to connect, you're going to say, yes, I want to add that. Um, then I'm being denied. So I'm going to go ahead and try once more by clicking on the up arrow, then re-enter and it asks me for my, for my uh, password. So let's say root one password. And I think I mistyped it. Yep, I did. Okay. <laughs> let's see. And here we go. So we are directly on our machine right now. So we're connected directly to the Linux machine. Um, as you can see here, this is the Ubuntu 20.04.2. So I went ahead and I hit clear just to see the whole thing. And as you can see, we are on root exile server. So we are on user root on the exile server machine. Now, what we have to do is we have to navigate to a place where we decide the build is going to be. I recommend going inside of the home folder because we're root, so we can pretty much do anything we want here, but let's just put it somewhere um, under home. And just to know where we're at right now, this is a Linux command, so you have to pick up a little bit of Linux. LS is going to show you what is inside of your folder. Right now, we are in a folder that has a snap folder on it. Uh, PWD will show you the working directory, so print working directory, and we're under the root. I'm going to go ahead and say cd dot dot. This is to navigate to the folder before me, then hit ls once more. And here we are in the main Linux OS. So let's go ahead and do CD home, head inside of the home folder, just like so. And that's where we're going to be putting our stuff. So under the home folder directly. Now, um, our build is right here. It's on our Windows machine and we want to put that on our Linux machine. How do we do that? Well, I am going to boot another git bash. So I'm going to hold shift, click on my git bash icon, and this should boot a new terminal. Here it is. And now this is on my Windows machine. As you can see, it's quite easy to know which machine you're on as it says it right here at the top. So this is on my desktop machine, my Windows machine, and here is on my Linux machine. Now, thanks to git bash, we can actually see uh, we can actually use some of the commands that are on Linux. We can use them on Windows as well. So as you can see here, ls shows me where I'm at. I know that, actually I don't even need to know, but um, what I want to do right here is I want to transfer file from my Windows machine to my Linux. And to do so, we can use SCP for transfer secure protocol, uh, something like that. <laughs> um, and then the first argument we can give it is dash R. Dash R means everything is going to be recursive going down. So if I say, hey, uh, can you transfer this folder over? It's also going to transfer the file beneath those, uh, beneath the folder. And if there's another folder in there, it's just going to keep going down until we get all the files, basically. The first argument we're going to send is 
the um, the place where the build is. So I'm gonna open up my quotes because I'm on the Windows, and I'm gonna find my Linux build. Here it is. Take my path directly from the bar. So copy, paste it here. Close my double quotes, and then the second argument. And the second argument is gonna be how and where we're gonna put it on the Linux machine. So we're gonna put it through the root user. So I'm gonna say root at um, what is the IP actually? I forgot the IP, so let's go back on DigitalOcean, copy this one, paste it, and then once we found uh, the user we're going to go through, we're going to say two dot slash home in this case. We can verify this path right here by going here and doing pwd for print working directory. So we want to put it right here. Let's go ahead and hit enter. They want the password once more, so Let's input that and then we have to wait for a bit because what happens right here is that we're transferring all the files from within that folder inside of home. As you can see, if we do ls, you're going to find another folder now. All right, we're back. So this took roughly two minutes for me and now it's time to actually um, find it on our Linux machine. So on our left side here is our Windows. We don't need it anymore for the moment at least. Um, and on the right hand side is my Linux. As you can see inside of home, uh, I can do lsla to see what this is. This is a folder actually. It's blue, so it means it's a folder. Um, what we can do is we can go inside of this folder. So cd, I'm going to say c in this case because that's the beginning of the letter. Hit tab and it's going to autocomplete to that. Then ls-la and you can find everything inside of here. Now the folder name is actually quite annoying and it's gonna make it so unt doesn't run. So let's go back one folder. So cd dot dot and now we're back right here in home. Inside of home, I'm actually going to rename the folder by moving it. That's what you do in Linux. So you're gonna say mvc tab. So we take the whole path like that and then change the name of it to dot dash for current folder and say this is gonna be build. Now if I do a lsla, as you can see, we now have a folder called build. I am going to see the inside of it, so build, and we're back to what we had prior. So our executable right here for Linux is this thing here. However, we cannot execute it because we're missing a permission. We're missing the x permission, which means execute. So we're going to go ahead and say shmod plus x and then the name of the executable. So exile.x86 underscore 64 press enter and as you look at it again this time through lsla you're gonna see it's green because it's ready to be ran so let's give it a try right um, dot dash exile dot x8664 that's my command if I press on enter we have a bunch of issues <laughs> now a lot of issues but as you can see those are all shader issues most likely related to the fact that I'm using the render pipeline the URP um, however, the game is actually running anyway. Now, to prove you that it's running anyway, we're actually going to launch the server. How do we launch the server already? Well, we use the command we did earlier, so the executable, and then we're going to say dash launch as server. And as you can see here, I'm getting, it's really hard to read, but I'm getting a bit of the debugs. If I am to zoom out, maybe it's going to be a little bit easier. Let's do that. Yeah, so starting the actor manager, starting the inventory, the construction manager, those are all my things. And at the top, I should see here, server is listening on 8000. And it also prints you the whole stack, which is quite annoying, <laughs> but that's because I have the development build on. Um, yeah, here it is. So server is listening on 8000. That's exactly what we wish. And this is running on a machine, not here. <laughs> that's the whole point. Uh, however, it's not completed. We are not done. Why are we not done? Well, because if we are to try and connect to this, and you know what, we're going to try right now, chances are we're not going to go through because of port forwarding and also because of the firewall. But let's give it a try, right? So to give it a try, I am on my editor right here. I'm going to go ahead and um, under my client script, which is not this one, base client, I'm going to actually put the IP address of the exile server. So over here, that is my public IP address. I'm going to put it right here. So when, when I launch my game, it tries to connect to this. Okay, let's give it a try. Click on 
start, click on client, and let's see. Attempting to connect to 138, 187, 151, that's basically my IP as you can see right here. And if I try to enter the game, it actually works. Yeah, okay, I could end the video right here. It actually works. That's all I needed to do. And as you can see here, on my Linux machine, I probably have some debug.log regarding that new combat state created for this very specific person. And if I am to put that in, let me try and, uh, let me try and do something like that. Um, do, do, do. If I go here, I try to spawn stuff. As you can see, this is on the right hand side, this is on my Linux machine, not at my place, completely not at my place, but instead hosted on DigitalOcean right here. So this is ran outside. And if I wanted to, I could have my laptop connect directly to that. And this would be my dedicated host on the right hand side. Um, if I decide to kill this, or if I decide to, for example, uh, go over here and shut down my server through the, um, through the cloud, hit turn off. Eventually, well now, basically my connection is closed by remote host. And if I try to spawn stuff right now, it doesn't work. Though I don't have a logic that kicks me out, but I can no longer interact with the server. And if I try to reconnect the same exact way as we've done just a second ago by clicking on the client, enter world, cannot send data while connecting because I'm still connecting. The server is basically down. Okay, so let's go back and actually open the server up. We are going to do one thing that is very important and that would be to have a firewall. <laughs> so let's quickly go back, turn it back on, turn the server back on and make sure we connect to it. So I quickly connected back to my server as you can see. And if I want to run this, the server once more, all I can do is go back to where it was. So CD home, um, CD build. Inside of my build folder, there should be the executable right here. So I'll say exile. Um, I want to launch, launch as server. Um, I don't need to do batch mode and I don't need to do no graphics because this is a server build. Um, this is what I checked in Unity and, and that's it. So this has to be, this can run. Um, if you want to run this in parallel, just after that, what you can do is add a ampersand and just like this, it should run in parallel. All right. And we're pretty much good to go at this point. So if I hit top, technically it should run. And as you can see, it runs right here. So I still have access to my shell. I can still navigate through things as I am doing now. And if I click on top, if I, if I actually type in top, it shows me all the processes are active right now, including my server, which should be currently um, hosting my game on port 8000. And as you can see, if I connect, I'm actually inside of the game. And uh, I do get some error, but those are related to my debug object. So not a big deal. All right. So this is actually how you do host. Oh, what, what happened here? Oh, I left the server, so I got a debug log for that. <laughs> that's, that's all there is to it. So that's pretty much it. That's how you do it with Linux. Um, this is now hosted. This is now a dedicated server and it's running there personally because I don't want this to cost me money because this costs money, of course. I'm gonna go ahead and destroy this droplet, but it's there, it works. However, before I destroy it, one thing that uh, would be quite important is to have the firewall. So if you know, help a little bit with the security because we haven't done much security practice in this video, unfortunately. So the least we could do is actually just add a firewall and you can do it directly within uh, Ubuntu. If you're familiar with UFW, uh, you can UFW allow the port that uh, first helps you connect with SSH and also UFW allow the port that um, runs your game. So in my case, 8,000 on UDP. Or if you're using DigitalOcean, you can also head to firewall. And then for example, here, I have a setup for exile. The setup says, allow all the um, SSH connection and also allow inbound UDP connection through port 8,000. And I can decide to apply this by doing the following. Oh, where is it exactly? Did I delete it? No, here it is. So adding this droplet. Okay. And now it should update it and it should adjust uh, my firewall based on my rules. And that's pretty much it. Now, one thing that I, I'm going to mention before we move any further, um, as I said earlier, 
it would be better if you would access your server with an SSH key. If you're not familiar, SSH key is basically something you use when you push through Git, through GitLab, um, and, and it's a key that is generated on your computer right now, and it's, it creates a pair, basically a private and a public pair. You send in the public to DigitalOcean, and once you connect, you can only you can actually validate who you are with that key without having to enter the password. So when we had the option to choosing between two authentication method, I suggest you do um, SSH. That's the first thing I suggest. And the, sen the second thing I suggest is that you also create yourself a new user in Linux um, that is going to have your build. So for example, you could create a user called uh, server and every interaction you would have would be under the server user. So you don't basically expose the root user. The root can just be hidden in a corner with the password that you don't even remember and that should be fine um yeah that's all i wanted to say regarding that i hope that you guys enjoyed this video i hope you learn a little bit of uh a little bit of networking a little bit of hosting and if you have any question please head over to the um, discord in which we can talk more you can ask question under the web or the unt programming help so i do invite you to do that thank you so much for watching and i'll see you soon cheers